Hey YouTube, it's Icy, and welcome to the 64th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. And to start off, I just wanted to say that I have a lot of news to cover in this video, especially jailbreak and unlock related. But first, I just wanted to say that I am doing a new giveaway in collaboration with Jared and Kristen over at Friday Night Cranks. So we are giving away a brand new iPhone 4S. And if you want to enter, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is subscribe to both of our channels. And if you want to gain entries, simply rate up our video videos, favorite them, and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the phrase FNC ICU iPhone. Once you do that, you will be entered into our giveaway to possibly win the iPhone 4S. And remember, you can do this multiple times on our new videos. Also, we will be launching a website soon that will have more ways for you to actually enter the giveaway. So with that said, we're going to move on to all of the jailbreak and unlock news. And first up, we have the Chronic Dev team with their Crash Reporter. Now, it's a relatively new utility that is made to run alongside iTunes, and essentially your device saves Crash Reports, which are instrumental to the development of jailbreaks because they contain valuable data that can possibly lead to a jailbreak exploit. So instead of having it send the Crash Reports to Apple, basically what their Crash Reporter utility does is it sends it to them instead so that they can analyze the information and again, possibly find new jailbreak exploits that they can implement into future jailbreak utilities. And building on that, POSIX Ninja, one of the main members of the Chronic Dev team, actually said that Apple closed a lot of their untethered exploits, and that's why it's been taking so long for them to actually release a jailbreak utility, is because somehow all of those exploits that they discovered were closed from the beta versions of iOS 5 to the final release of iOS 5. And hopefully with this new crash tool, they will be able to produce a untethered jailbreak utility relatively soon. Also, earlier this week, there was a lot of commotion about a new tool called Acid Snow. It was said to be a tethered jailbreak utility for the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation, as well as the first iPad. And it was essentially like Red Snow. However, it did not work properly. And later on, we found out that their tool violated a couple copyrights. So definitely stay away from Acid Snow and don't even download it. Also, earlier this week, Muscle Nerd, one of the key members of the iPhone, iPhone dev team tweeted out that they had a very promising iPhone 4S unlock in the works and later on Muscle Nerd came back to say that they have successfully dumped the baseband boot ROM for the iPhone 4S. So this is great news because it does mean that they are closer to having an unlock solution for the iPhone 4S. And obviously because they are the iPhone dev team and because they have released other software unlock tools in the past, such as Ultra Snow, this will definitely be a software-based unlock. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, in order to take advantage of a software-based unlock, you need to have a jail break first and you need to have Cydia on your device with root access to the device so you can actually use that software unlock. So basically what that means is that if they're planning on releasing an unlock for the iPhone 4S sometime in the near future, they need to release a jailbreak first or a jailbreak utility needs to be available first for the iPhone 4S. And judging by what's happened in the past, I highly doubt they're going to use a hardware-based exploit for the iPhone 4S. So that means that they're most likely going to use a user land based exploit. So basically that means that when the jailbreak is finally released before the iPhone 4S unlock is released, it will be an untethered jailbreak and it will most likely cover all of the other devices that are currently out, including the iPad 2. So that pretty much wraps up our jailbreak and unlock related news for this video. But what's somewhat related to that is that Apple released iOS 5.1 beta one. And if you want to get all of the changes and new features, then you can check out the post that I have down below in the more info. And actually inside of iOS 5.1 beta one, new devices have been discovered. So basically when Apple lists devices, they reference them by number. So for instance, the Wi-Fi model iPad 2 is referenced as the iPad 2 comma 1. Now they did discover an iPad 2 comma 4, which most people are assuming is a Sprint iPad, but that's not even really the best part. They've also discovered the iPhone 5 comma 1, as well as the iPad 3 comma 3. So this suggests that these will be new devices with significant changes from their predecessors, because the first number in the sequence is completely different than what the current 
current iPhone and iPad are referred to. So it's definitely great news for Apple fans everywhere. Also, someone put together a video demonstrating Siri's capabilities versus Microsoft's Tell Me capabilities, and it is definitely funny to see what Tell Me does, and I highly recommend watching that video. Again, I'll have a link to that down below in the more info. Also, with the Siri proxy, developers have been getting creative lately, and one developer put out a video demonstrating how he can control Plex video playback using Siri, actually select different videos, play them, pause them, and skip ahead to new videos. So that's definitely interesting, and hopefully Apple will include something like that in the future. And another developer created other plugins that allowed him to text from third-party applications, control iTunes on his computer, launch applications on his computer, as well as wake his computer up from sleep mode. So like I was saying, the potential for Siri is basically limitless, and it will really be interesting to see what Apple does with Siri in the future when new devices are released. Also, something was released to Cydia called Sirius that allowed users to get Siri dictation on their older devices. However, it was removed due to legal reasons. Also, Microsoft released a new website that allows users with an HTML5 capable web browser to basically get a demo of the Windows Phone 7 OS. And it's definitely something creative that Microsoft is the first one to actually do in the mobile phone market. And it is really interesting to actually see how well it works and to get a feel for the Windows Phone 7 OS on another device such as an iPhone or an Android based phone. However, I'm sure a lot of you can agree with me, the Windows Phone 7 OS isn't quite up to par with iOS or Android even. But again, it's definitely a great demo and it's definitely a great tool to try and get people to switch over to the Windows Phone 7 platform. And finally, I did an Infinity Blade 2 pre-release overview and I also did a video for Infinity Blade 2 that basically gave you guys a overview and a quick review for it. So if you guys wanna check those out, I'll have links to them down below in the more info. So I hope you guys liked this video. Just remember to rate it up, favorite it, and also hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video. Also, I will have links to my Twitter accounts and Facebook fan page down below. Just be sure to follow my Twitter accounts and like my Facebook fan page to be updated more often. And links to everything I talked about in today's episode will be in the more info. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.